holidays. You're watching the Body, Mind, Spirit in Motion, and I'm your host, Jill Hewlett. For any questions or comments, please go to my website at jillhewlett.com. On this program, we believe health is wealth. And so with us, to get us on that journey into the holiday season and the new year ahead, we have with us a nutritional consultant, Coach Hewlett. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's always fun. Well, you've been on the program before, Dad, and for viewers who don't know, you are my father, as well as a really well-known um, person in the community who's promoting health and wellness, and you're doing a great job of it, so. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a journey, and it's been fun, and I think I finally got the, finally got the picture. Okay. Well, your journey has led you to this, and of course, being your daughter, I know firsthand how things transpired and how you evolved to this point of, of sharing nutrition and helping people with their health. Uh, but there's probably viewers out there who don't know. So would you like to share some of your background? Well, sure, Jill. Thank you. Um, I guess the biggest wake-up call was uh, almost 10 years ago. It would be nine and a half years ago. Uh, I had three heart attacks, and then I went in for bypass surgery. And uh, while, while I was in the hospital uh, waiting for the bypass surgery to take place, there was people coming in, males and females, coming into the hospital that had had bypass surgery, and they were literally turned away. There was no, there was no second choice. There was no second chance. There was no just go home and relax, retire, uh, don't do anything strenuous. It was just like um, hmm. there was nothing left, so to speak. It was like a, it was like literally a dead end. Uh, correct. <laughs> this is in the hospital, right, in Newmarket, and uh, I, I was pretty paranoid about that, but I knew I had to go. For the bypass at that time, mm -hmm. so we uh, we conceded and we went for the bypass. And um, mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, it was it was a good bypass surgery. I come out and I'm still alive, mm -hmm. so that's a good thing. Yeah. But that was a wake up call to suggest to mm -hmm. me and to the family what I did prior to the to the bypass and what caused the arterial blockage. Mm -hmm. So we were mm -hmm. kind of on a quest. Uh, right. Um, like, to, to make changes, right? Because, right. Because what you're saying is, so you, you came to this point where you had a heart attack, you had actually three heart attacks, and ended up having to get bypass surgery. And you knew that, okay, if I get the surgery, that won't be enough because there's obviously things, factors that led up to this. Correct. And if I don't change those factors, yes. something else may come along. And, sure. and also knowing that the surgery isn't long term. You saw other people, other men and women even, coming into the hospital mm -hmm. who had surgery and it was successfully done and we're so grateful to the medical field for that. However, once they had surgery, if they didn't make other changes, likely blockage was going to come back. Correct. And they wouldn't be able to be operated on again necessarily. Correct. Well, I think people get, um, they have this misnomer or this feeling that because they can go and get the bypass surgery, they're new again, they can start fresh everything's okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's a perfect thing. Well, any operation, doesn't matter what it is, it changes your life. And it's kind of like it's insulting your body because right. operations change your body. It's invasive. Your physiology, yeah, it's invasive, correct. And uh, so knowing all this, like, like you said, Jill, uh, the family, uh, Helen and I, my wife Helen, decided to, to change our lifestyle a bit, mm -hmm. slow things down, um, certainly take more nutrition, and, you know, keep looking, keep mm -hmm. trying to find the, the, um, the, end, the best way to do it. Right, right, mm -hmm. find some answers. Sure. Yeah. And, and it's so interesting because we aren't really taught nutrition in school. Correct. And if we don't learn it from our parents, if they aren't aware of it, then we do have to go up on a quest ourselves. And out of all the guests I've had on the show, and we've had, oh my goodness, almost probably more than 500 guests on this program wow. now, mm -hmm. a lot of them have been connected to nutrition on some level because we are what we eat. Sure. Now, Correct. Now, I know what you ultimately found was an adjunct to eating proper foods on a daily basis. It's mm -hmm. complementary to that. And so it goes beyond what people think would be eating healthy foods that they buy from the grocery store or the health food store. It goes a step beyond that. Correct. And um, again, there's this misconception that food will support us. The four food groups are there. They've been there forever. And the biggest problem of all with that perception is that um, the food in the four food groups and the food that we eat um, mm -hmm. are not grown on land that is really substantial in yeah. terms of nutrition. Right. So that reasoning doesn't really cut it. Mm -hmm. You must supplement 
what you're eating with nutrition that fortifies the food? Right, so you're saying the food that's grown doesn't necessarily carry the full nutrition that we need. Correct. Um, if it's not grown in soil that's really nutritionally rich, then it won't carry it to our plate. Correct. Yeah. And, and likely the soil today, and I know even um, on CNN I saw a report, it was actually a couple years ago now, where they said, you know, there's a Senate document actually that says the soil is no longer nutritionally um, at the levels we need it to maintain good health. That's right, it's, Joe. I think it's like 50% less nutrition in the soil than it was 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so, the value in our food has come down, come down like, a, like a lead balloon, really. And uh, <laughs> the, the research suggests, and proven and proven time and time again, that what was in broccoli 40 years ago is fractional today. And, of course, mm. these nutrients that we need that come from broccoli and come from uh, different other vegetables and fruits just mm. are not there. I think about um, my grandma, mom's mom, your mother-in-law, yeah, mm -hmm. and she's 85 now. Bye, and Vanilla, yeah, yeah. She, and she, is, she grew up in Bracebridge, living on a farm, and she would go into the root cellar over the winter time to get out vegetables and things for dinner, and she would even eat sometimes some of the soil. And she said it tasted like chocolate. It was so dark and rich. Uh, and I, I, I have this image of people, you know, years ago, generations ago, being able to get that, and um, they could live like rabbits and be sustained from the gardens. And they weren't eating packaged food, fried foods, fast foods, those things. Um, but today life is different, and I, I believe you'd be more familiar with this than I would, but something to the effect that the kids today may not outlive their parents based on each generation gets weaker with less nutrition available to them. Very, very well spoken, very well said. Uh, and also uh, referring to the old days, the, um, uh, the rural areas, obviously they cooked in potbelly stoves and they heated the house in the wintertime with these potbelly stoves and uh, they throw in the wood. And of course, these, the, the, the ashes from the wood stoves would get taken out and put on the gardens because these ashes were full of minerals, full of minerals. So, of course, when you spray them on the garden and, and uh, hoe them all in, uh, the, um, the produce from their home gardens was more than, more than good. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So they knew to do that, they knew to do, to do that. and it, today we have stoves, so there's, that can't even happen, even if we wanted to. We've gone right. into using regular, what, electric ovens. Electric, yeah. And yeah. it's not that was the That was the, the bad side of it. Uh, the good side is electricity, we need it. But the bad side is it took away all these, uh, these mm -hmm. wood stoves, which were so essential back then. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So these modern-day appliances sometimes take away from nutrition in ways that we didn't even know. We didn't Correct. realize. Yeah. Um, so question for you, because I know that you are so well-versed in this. And honestly, you could probably very easily go back and get your um, naturopathic <laughs> degree or something. Because you, you read, you listen to CDs, you're listening to tapes, you go to training, you go to lectures, you go to workshops. Um, what was the, the turning point? Like what, what landed in your lap that said, this is what I'm going to do and this is the path I'm going to take? Because I know at that point when you were having surgery, you were investigating many different routes. For sure. For sure. And there's so much out there. I think the average person today, the masses, shall we say, are confused uh, because there's so many different ideas, so many different approaches, so many different things in a health store that you can purchase and put on your shelf in the, in the cupboard. And it's, it's literally confusing. Some people throw their hands in the air and say, I'm not doing this because they're spending too much money mm -hmm. and they're not getting the results that they really need. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were lucky enough, we were fortunate enough, uh, Helen and I, to come across a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, come across a Dr. Wallach who was touring in Canada mm -hmm. and lecturing on health and nutrition and longevity. We, uh, we really were for fortunate enough to um, go and listen to him in Markham. It was a three-hour lecture, and uh, we sat in the front seat, Helen and I, and boy, um, he really told us a lot of things that we weren't quite sure were that accurate <laughs> because they weren't, they weren't the regular things that we had learned through our, our life, our prior life, uh, reading books and listening to the radio and uh, listening to the doctors and so on. Yeah. So he changed things around for us uh, considerably, and of course, uh, back then you, uh, you interviewed him. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was interesting. The same morning that, that mom had heard him on breakfast television, she called me immediately and said, there's this fantastic doctor on BT. Did you get a chance to see him? And I said, well, I missed it, but what's his name? And, or is his name Dr. Wallach? And she said, how did you know? And I'm, <laughs> I'm having him on this program uh, yeah. in a few days. So those three days. So